everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. There is a lot to talk about on today's So What? First of all, it's the first day of February. So that means it's the beginning of National Embroidery Month. So that's kind of a holiday here in sulky land because, as you know, we love some embroidery. And throughout the month, we're going to be giving you lots of machine embroidery tips, techniques, and projects, as well as hand embroidery tips, techniques, and projects. So I hope you're ready to dive into February and get your embroidery on. Starting with today, we're going to be embroidering on some really beautiful luggage tags. I have some samples right here. Here is one that I did using the Sulky Poly Sparkle thread. So it's kind of got a little bit of glitz going on, which even though it's tone on tone uh, embroidery colors, that Poly Sparkle really makes it pop. It's a little hard to see in the light here, but and this is actually a soft pink color. Um, it looks a little bit hot pink on camera, at least to me, but it's a much softer pink than it comes across. And these are genuine leather luggage tag blanks that we now have at sulky.com. This is another version that I did, and I'm going to be showing you exactly how I did it today on So What? But it really got me thinking about smart packing. You know, ways to stay organized so that if we are going to travel or go on a trip, whether it's on an airline or just jumping in our car for a road trip, um, you know, spring breaks are coming up for kids and it's going to be summer before we know it. So we can start planning now for some smart packing projects and patterns to make now and have for later. These also make really great gifts. For graduates, if you have anyone graduating in 2022, they make great gifts for Father's Day, Mother's Day, birthdays, or just to make for yourself to really get a little more organized and, uh, you know, be able to pack all of your things in um, a nice big bag and just go away for the weekend. So uh, before we get started there, speaking of travel, now... I know traveling right now is a very personal choice and, you know, some people feel safe doing it. Others do not. I totally get that. Uh, so what I'm about to present to you, just, you know, take it in, think about it, and uh, I hope you will join us. But we are back with Craft Tours in 2020. We will be, oh, I have to get my dog out of here so she doesn't, go on, go, go, go. A lot of the times she likes to sneak under my table and then all the lights come crashing down, the sewing machine turns off and everything um, that I've just set up gets destroyed. <laughs> so bear with me, hold on just one moment and think about Europe. Think about Sulky's 35th anniversary celebration with craft tours. I know it's exciting stuff. Okay. I had to make sure that nothing was going to, <laughs> my dog is very big. She's about 98 pounds. So when she decides to sneak under my sewing table, um, the whole world can, um, like I said, come crashing down. Okay, so Sulky's 35th anniversary celebration in Europe. All right, we will be going to Germany where Sulky thread is made and manufactured. We will be going to Austria. We will be seeing the dye house where Sulky thread is dyed. It's actually really fascinating, a really, really cool um, place to be and just you know, it's, it's nothing like you would expect, really. It's a small operation and it's, you know, you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere and all of a the sudden there's this dye house where uh, they dye sulky thread. It's amazing. We will also be going to Italy and there is an optional trip to uh, get on a boat and 
uh, be on Lake Cuomo. You might even see George Clooney if you're lucky. <laughs> and then there are some pre-tour options as well. So if, you know, we, we start out in New York because that's where we will all fly out together. So we thought we would add a pre-tour package in New York City. We have to get there anyways, right? So get there a couple of days early and we will see the city together. You will have time on your own if you want to see a Broadway show or if you want to go eat at some fabulous restaurants or if you want to just walk around Central Park and take it all in. We will have a day trip to Mood Fabrics and we will go to the Fashion District and you will get to see um, all kinds of things that will spark your, your creative endeavors for 2022 and beyond. So that's our pre-tour package in New York City. That's an optional add-on. And then after our main Europe trip, we will be going on to Tuscany. So that's the post-tour option that you can also add on. If you want to do the whole shebang, you can sign up for all three, or you can just sign up for the main tour and meet us in Munich. It's going to be a fantastic time. And, you know, this has been delayed for a couple of years now. I, that seems so crazy to say, but it's true. So uh, if you have any questions about COVID-related precautions or safety measures that craft tours, um, you know, really takes to heart and abides by all of that. So you can contact craft tours directly if you have any questions related to that. I do know we only have about six spots left on the tour. So if it is something that you're considering, you may want to go ahead and tell them to put your name down now uh, because it is a limited amount of people for the tour because of those COVID precautions. All right. So speaking of traveling, you know, this, the luggage tags, all kinds of things got me thinking about how we can sew our way to packing a little bit smarter getting a little bit organized in our life, you know, as spring approaches, it's spring cleaning time and um, all of those great motivational things. So, oh, first let's answer some questions because Peg just said, what were your classes be? So during the craft tours excursion, I will be teaching two hands-on workshops. Um, and since we can't really lug sewing machines all the way to Europe, they will both be, um, well, one of them is going to be a handwork class and one of them is going to be a pattern drafting class because when we are in Italy, we will be going to a silk factory. It's absolutely the most amazing shopping experience. No one gets to shop at the silk factory unless you are part of the tour. So when we are there, we will be the only group shopping in their um, small area. They have pre-made scarves and um, fabulous ties and great, great souvenirs um, in the silk shop. And then there's also fabric shopping. So you can buy some of the most amazing silks at a fraction of the price of what it would cost you when it comes over to the U.S. Um, so I'll be doing a pattern drafting workshop to create a garment that you can uh, make when you get home with some of the silk that you purchase. If you decide to purchase silk or any other fabric substrate on that fabric shopping trip, or of course you can just use your own fabric when you get home, but we will be learning how to draft something to fit our bodies and you can either use that fabric or like I said, <clears throat> something else to sew it up when you get home. Um, so the other uh, class I will be doing, which is our, these are optional workshops as well. They often take place after we've had a whole day of sightseeing and touring um, at the hotel. So if you're too tired to join us, I'll provide you with all of the information and kit and, and or pattern, whatever you need to create it once you get home. Or you could certainly join us in person one of those evenings uh, while we're doing the, the hands-on workshop. But our second workshop is going to be a hand embroidery, handwork class, and I'll be providing you with a pattern um, to follow. We'll be practicing our stitches um, and just chit-chatting, and it'll be something that 
you know, you can remember your travels by. You know, I really love grabbing a piece of fabric or, you know, creating something when I'm in a different place. We can even turn this handwork item into an ornament and then that will also remind you of those travels. So I'm being a little bit vague because I'm still developing uh, the workshops, but in a nutshell, that's what we're going to be learning hands-on while we are there together. Okay, so... All right, Patricia says, I've been on many of the old Sonus tours. They were great, and this one sounds great, too. All right, Patricia says, this will have to stay on my bucket list for now. And asking about the cost. So you'll have to go to crafttours.com and find the 35th anniversary Sulky Tour. That will give you all the cost information. If you start now, you can get on a payment plan as well. So you can pay in monthly installments leading up to the tour as opposed to paying all in one lump sum, which makes it a little bit easier to absorb. Um, I also linked directly to our craft tours trip in the description of today's post. So if you're not seeing that, click the little see more button on the description and then the whole post will pop out. I put tons of links in today's post because I'm going to be talking about a lot, a lot of stuff. All right. Let me just make sure Glenna would love to go on this trip. It's going to be great. All right. And I understand not being comfortable traveling yet. I completely get it. Hopefully we continue these tours and the world becomes a safer, safer place uh, the more we, you know, move forward. So I completely understand those decisions as well. Some people had craft tours, um, uh, trips booked during the pandemic that were canceled. And so if you are one of those people, um, you may be able to contact craft tours and kind of shift your funds into the sulky tour. I'm not completely positive about that, but they are very accommodating and a great company to work with. And, you know, it's been really challenging for them, as you can imagine. So they're really, really trying their best. You know, things are changing every day with the guidelines, especially overseas. And Craft Tours is really, really diligent about making sure everyone is prepared and um, being as safe as possible. So keep that in mind as well. Okay. All right. So let's get into... Oh, Amy says, will you do any live presentations from any of the visits? So our first craft tours trip to Germany a few years ago uh, with Sulky, I tried to live stream um, from the bus and it, it didn't turn out great. It was not successful. Um, I don't know if it was the connection or where I was or the fact that we were on a bus, like driving through some mountains um, but I just could not get the live stream uh, to work. So I filmed some still videos and then I put together um, kind of a short video retrospective of that tour. And it is, um, I believe, on our blog at blog.sulky.com. Um, so you may, you may need to um, check that out. Sherry says, travel insurance is important to get. They do offer that at craft tours as well. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. Um, and Jennifer has looked up the cost of the main tour. I know it does look intimidating. Um, you do get a craft tours um, host the entire time who knows everywhere we're going um, and, you know, can communicate with all of the tours and the bus driver and everything. We have our own personal bus taking us from place to place. All of your lodging is included in that. Most of your food is included in that, at least breakfasts and then some dinners. We will be celebrating the 35th anniversary of Sulky. So we're having kind of a fancy um, 
dinner to celebrate that as well, well, where we can get dressed up or, you know, come as you are, however you're comfortable. Um, there's a lot, a lot of things included in this tour. Uh, so I think you'll find if you are considering a trip like this um, and you want to be with like-minded people who love to sew, craft, quilt, create, um, you will make friends for a lifetime. On our last Sulky Germany tour, um, I know there are some of you that always watch So What still. We exchange Christmas cards. We are still on a group text together. Um, it, it was just such a fantastic experience. And, you know, it was worth it just meeting all the ladies and gentlemen that joined us on that first trip that we had. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to this next one as well. Okay, do you do these annually? Um, you know, we would like to. COVID put a wrench in our plans to continue doing them annually, but I hope that 2022 is the start to kick it off as an annual thing with Sulky as well. Um, we like to change it up a little bit. So our first tour, we did the Christmas markets in Germany, and it was around Christmas time. It was very, very cold some days. Um, and we, you know, we, uh, we did it up. We did so many Christmas markets, um, in different parts of Germany and it was absolutely amazing, amazing. So this time our trip is in September and we have some different things on the agenda. So obviously it won't be, uh, Christmas market time. Uh, the weather will be a little bit nicer. Like I said, we'll be doing Italy as well. And it's right around the time of Fashion Week in Milan. So the people watching is just phenomenal. I don't know how it's going to be, um, you know, with COVID precautions. Um, but I dare to say there will still be some great people watching from afar um, as as models, photographers, fashion designers all flock to that area for fashion week. So um, that'll be really fun as well. All right. So let's get to the projects at hand today. I want to start with the Casey Duffel because next Tuesday we are going live at sewingonline.sulky.com with the Casey Duffel video cast. So give me a thumbs up if you are already registered. If you are not, go ahead and head over to the link that I put in the post today and register for the video cast. There is still time. I wanted to show you, this is the burgundy version of the Casey Duffel and this is the gray version. So I have mine kind of all packed up. So you can see everything I was able to fit inside and there is still room. So what I absolutely love about this bag is two outer pockets. This one I did in the matching canvas fabric. This one I did in the solid lining fabric so that I could add machine embroidery. It also has lots of hardware on it. You can see the side buckles out here giving you even more room and a different shape to the bag when you need to stuff it even more. So this is a great little weekender bag, but it's also a great project tote if you are working on a quilt or something like that, taking it to and from. This will hold all of your supplies and then some. So it's got two handles or you can use the adjustable strap to carry it messenger style, over the shoulder, whatever you like. The slider buckle allows you to make it longer or shorter and wear it where it's comfortable for you. And then you can also take off the long handle if it's getting in your way or you just want to use these handles for travel and then bring this along with you when you get to where you're going. So in my bag, I have some other things that are great for organization as well as travel. So I fit an entire sweatshirt and pair of leggings, rolled them up together and fit it in the bag. I also have my little pouch that holds all of my technology cords, earbuds, chargers, all that stuff. I also have my 
I heart quilting uh, zipper pouch. These are available at sulky.com. This just has a little bit of sewing kit for sewing on the go. It actually holds a rotary cutter, but you don't have to use it for that. And then I have my favorite one by six ruler inside, um, a pack of needles, a seam ripper, and a spool of thread. So just a little sewing kit. All I need are my snips inside, but I'll be using them for the demo today. So I've got this. I have my toiletry bag, just a zippered pouch. And then this is actually a project that's inside our smart packing blog post as well. And I have had this forever. Um, I mean, I think I did a demo um, on this maybe like 14 years ago <laughs> for National Sewing Circle. And, you know, it's been around the block, but I absolutely love it. And I've made them as, as gifts before. And I did a tutorial on this on the Sulky blog as well, using a uh, fusible vinyl to coat this little roll up so that if you use it for makeup brushes like I do, now this is a laminated cotton, but you can kind of make your own laminated cotton using fusible vinyl. So it opens like this. And then as you can see, it has all these little pockets to hold all of my makeup brushes. So super handy. And since it's laminated cotton or vinyl, when it gets dirty from the tips of your brushes, you can just wipe it off with a Clorox wipe or just soap in water and a sponge and it comes clean. And this just has a little hook and loop tape dot to hold it shut. And I mean, 15 years I've had this and the dot has never come off. I, it, it's amazing. I did reinforce it with stitching. So once you have that, you simply roll it up, use a tie. I used, um, what did I use here? I don't know why I can't think of this, but you could just use any ribbon or even make some bias tape for your little tie. Love it. Use it all the time. All right, I'm not even finished of what is fitting in this bag. I've got all of my hair stuff, comb, brush, flat iron. There's interior pockets holding all kinds of hair ties because you, you always need more than one. But anyways, I have tons of room left in here. So what I also like about it is if you don't pack it full of stuff, it kind of scrunches down to be a little bit smaller bag. So you could really use it as an everyday purse as well. So I will be demoing this next Tuesday at sewingonline.sulky.com. The Casey Duffel video cast is what you want to look for. So definitely join us for that. We still have kits available. The burgundy kits are going really, really fast, but we still have a couple of those left. And the gray kits have the black faux leather and the nickel hardware. And the burgundy kits have the burgundy leather, the burgundy zipper tape, and the antique hardware. So those are the kits to choose from. The kits come with the pattern, but you can also purchase the digital pattern uh, separately if you want to go that route. But again, you're saving a bunch of money. I think you will find that buying all of these things separately um, really, really drives the price up. And we've got just the yardages that you need to create your Casey Duffel, including all of the interfacing, the foam, the zippers, the hardware, all of that stuff that you have to go out and find in one convenient kit. So it's really great to purchase it that way. All right, so for, let's see, where do I wanna go next? Oh, the Posh Project and Tech Tote. Now, if you have joined our Facebook group, which is Sulky Stitch and Post, I hope you go over and join that because people are posting away and uh, putting up pictures of all of their creations. And we absolutely love seeing your take on things there are a couple of these Posh Project and Tech Trapper totes posted already by viewers like you who have 
done their twist on this project. And the reason I'm bringing that up right now is because this is so great for traveling if you need to take your tablet, your e-reader, even a project on the go. Um, it's got vinyl pockets inside so you can see through and store your earbuds, your chargers, all of those things that need to come with your e-reader or tablet. Um, it's just a really great project. You can see the snaps come around. The whole thing opens up flat for you like a book. So it's a really unique kind of modern take on the briefcase. So this is another one where we have kits available still, or you can also grab up that digital pattern if you want to create it using your own fabric. But this comes with really high quality Paradiso pleather in either distressed brown or black ostrich. So these make great gifts for graduates, Father's Day, Mother's Day. You could also forego the quilting on it and put an embroidery design on the front, and that would be a great way to showcase your machine embroidery. Okay. Another great travel bag is our So Can She organizer. Uh, Caroline Critchfield of So Can She has this pattern that we developed into a video cast. Um, actually, I think it's a free webcast at sewingonline.sulky.com. And I took everybody through how to create this awesome zipper pouch. So it also folds open, but not completely flat because it has these boxed corners that give the pockets really great dimension to them. So you have a lot more room to store things like thread spools and scissors and even a skein of yarn because of the dimension of those boxed corners. So as you can see, it's actually open because when you open it, the zippers on either side are keeping all of your things contained. And then it just closes with a magnetic snap. So this also can feature quilting or an embroidery design of your choice. And it's a really great project. We have this kit still available, very limited quantities, but we've got this purple heather colorway and then that um, sort of Southwest look uh, mauve colorway as well. So really, really great thing for traveling. Great little pouch to give away as a gift or to add to your Casey bag to store your items so they don't uh, get lost in there. Okay, speaking of zipper pouches, um, you know, I pulled about three of them out of my Casey bag and I just wanted to show you that we have some really cute pre-made zipper pouches at sulky.com as well. This is one of my favorites, opposites attract. I just think it's the cutest thing. Uh, so if you are trying to get to that free shipping thre threshold at sulky.com, throw in one of these um, inexpensive zipper pouches that are so cute for your sewing friends, for Mother's Day, um, you know, that type of thing. So here's another one that's really cute. What's sewing on? Love it. <laughs> okay. Zipper pouches, zipper pouches. This is a pre-made tote bag. And, you know, we all need a tote bag. Am I right? You know, I kind of consider my Aurora bag, whoa, just fell off the wall, from New Year's Eve to be my go-to tote bag right now, um, but it is pretty fancy, I will say. So when I am just kind of running to the library with my kids and um, need a tote to just shove all their stuff, or now where I live, you have to pay 10 cents for a bag if you need one at the store. So it's great to have these roomy tote bags that aren't as fancy schmancy as, you know, maybe the one you made for New Year's Eve with all of your leather accents and your, your Aurora bag. But this one still speaks to your sewing interests. I love that it's a take on the Beatles and it says the needles. Ha! So cute. So anyway, I just wanted to show that off because that's also available at sulky.com as well. All right. So... Now we are finally getting to our luggage tag project. 
you can grab these luggage tag blanks at sulky.com. You could put them on your Casey bag, your Aurora bag, your suitcase, your duffel, anything you want, really. Um, it's a great way to unify your belongings as well. If you're coming along for our craft tours trip, um, you know, we put a lot of stuff in that bus. So if you have all pink luggage tags on your belongings, you can easily see what's yours and get to your hotel room rather quickly. Um, these also, again, make great gifts. Uh, relatively inexpensive. I think they're $12 a piece. They are genuine leather. Um, I will show you what the inside looks like and how easy it is to customize them with embroidery. All right, let me make sure my other camera hasn't turned off. So the reason that I am showing you this beautiful array of thread here on the screen is that is our giveaway today. So for one lucky viewer who is watching, engaging with the post, meaning giving me thumbs up, hearts, I'll even take those sad emojis if you're not feeling up to it today, commenting, posting questions, sharing the post out, all of those good things, you are automatically eligible to win our Radiant Rayons 10-pack thread assortment. And the reason I'm showing this 10-pack assortment is because it really complements all the colors of luggage tags that we now have at sulky.com. So we've got pink and purple. We've got a basic black. We have got a rose gold that's really pretty. We have a red. We have a teal. And then we also have a green, which I'm gonna be showing you how to embroider this one today. So I thought the Radiant Rayons thread assortment was perfect for all of these colors. You can mix and match, do a tone on tone or a contrasting color. You can choose a monogram design, a traditional, you know, um, machine embroidery design of your favorite licensed character, um, something like that. And we will be talking about design choices momentarily. All right. First off, when you're embroidering these luggage tags, we are not going to be hooping them. The uh, stitchable area is too small to fit in any hoop and it would mar the leather, okay? It also, the leather might be too thick to even fit in a hoop. So we don't wanna go that route. We're going to do hoopless embroidery. So when you're doing hoopless embroidery, you're going to attach your item to the stabilizer that's already been hooped. So only the stabilizer is hooped. And then we're going to stick the item to be embroidered directly to the stabilizer. And I'm gonna show you that in a moment. But first off, it becomes increasingly important to make sure that your design ends up in the right place on your luggage tag. You pretty much want it right in the center or you may want it along that lower edge. But regardless, it needs to have some kind of center um, position to it that's not askew. So in order to make sure that that happens, we are going to grab some sulky stick and stitch. This is a printable stabilizer sheet. A pack comes with many sheets, I believe 12. And it's the same product as Sulky Sticky Fabrisolvi. So if you have sticky Fabrisolvi sheets, that's all you need. If you have nothing, you can purchase either the Stick and Stitch or the Sticky Fabrisolvi sheet. These are specially cut to fit in your home printer. So grab a piece of Stick and Stitch, a sheet, and in the blog post that goes with our Smart Packing So What episode today, I have linked to the Sulky Placement Stickers PDF. You are going to print that onto a sheet of Stick and Stitch. So this is my printer if you tilt your head because I didn't rotate that image for some reason, but there it is coming out of my printer. You want to make sure that you're printing on the fabric-like side, 
because the paper side is what we are going to peel away to make this a placement sticker. Now, why are we using this stabilizer? Well, it's because it's completely water soluble. And if we forget to remove our placement sticker, when the embroidery is complete, we can take a wet Q-tip or cotton swab and just run it across um, and really saturate the sticker and it will remove with no trace. So that's why I love printing these onto the water soluble fabric-like stick and stitch stabilizer. All right. So once we have that printed out, we're going to hoop only our stabilizer. And for this, I'm using Sulky Sticky Plus. Sticky Plus is a tearaway adhesive backed stabilizer. We're going to hoop it with the paper side facing up and you can see it says Sticky Plus and it actually says this side up. So you will know to hoop it with the paper side facing up. That's because we're going to score the paper inside that inner hoop and remove it to reveal the adhesive. And that's what we're going to stick our luggage tag to so that it is in the hoop without being hooped. Okay, in order to score the paper, you know, you can use a pin. A lot of people do that. That's how I learned how to do it before I knew this tool existed. Um, you can use the tip of scissors, but I would really be extra, extra careful doing that because you can slice through both the paper backing and the stabilizer just like that. And then all of a sudden, you will need a new piece of stabilizer to hoop. And this one will either be useless or you'll have to use it in a smaller hoop if you happen to have a smaller hoop size. So in order to avoid that, we're going to use the Sulky Sticky Plus Slitting Pen. This tool is specifically made to only go through that paper layer. Don't ask me how they did it, but they did. It comes in a cute little case so that you can always identify it if you put it in, you know, your cute little thimble container, which we have at sulky.com. This is where I have all of my kind of go-to supplies right next to my sewing machine. Rotary cutter, point turner, pencil, fabric marker, a few of my favorite scissors, and always my Sticky Plus slitting pen. It has a um, protective covering over the point because you can see just how sharp that is. But it's not sharp enough to go through the stabilizer as well as the paper. It's awesome. So you will run this along your inner hoop ring. I have another method I'm gonna show you momentarily where we just run it over a small area of the stabilizer. But for now and for beginning this, if you're a beginner and have never done hoopless embroidery, you can run it along the entire inner hoop ring and then peel away that paper backing, which is going to reveal our adhesive. So now it's a matter of marking our center marks of our hoop. And everybody's hoop markings are different based on your brand. But what I find is the um, horizontal lines on our hoop um, are often not visually centered. So if you go to mark your hoop in the exact center, your design actually will not stitch in the center. So make sure you're using your hoop markings and that your hoop inner hoop is oriented um, properly so that you can read um, the hoop markings, you know, right side up. And then we're going to mark those center cross marks directly onto the stabilizer. So I used a Sharpie for this just so that you all could see it, but you could use a pencil or any kind of marker uh, because this is just going to be torn away after our stitching is complete. So we're marking directly on the stabilizer. And again, I'm using my trusty one by six ruler here. 
Now it's time for that placement sticker. I apologize that my photos are upside down here, but you get the idea. One placement sticker you can actually use multiple times, providing that you remember to remove it before your embroidery begins. So cut out one of those stickers and we're going to be putting that sticker on our luggage tag and then matching those lines up with the lines we put on the stabilizer. All right, so here is the embroidered area, the area to be embroidered on the luggage tag. So you want to remove this little buckle. Actually, I better do it on my blank luggage tag that I'm going to demo for you here. So remove the buckle and that will allow you to fold that front area back. So this is what your luggage tag looks like. It has a vinyl um, kind of covering for your information. And then this is our embroidery area. So you can peel that back totally away and measure your area to be embroidered. So you can either Combine letters using your machine screen. If you want to make a monogram or a name or a fun phrase, maybe it says um, mine or maybe it says I sew or you can kind of get fun with it like you would, you know, making a license plate. But you want to make sure that whatever letters, design, anything like that that you do choose for this fits within that stitchable area. And you want to be sure that you have a little bit of a border too. You don't want your stitches going, you know, too close to the edge. It just doesn't look appealing when you are done. So I want to say this is about one and three quarter by two and three quarter. Um, that's pretty much the stitchable area. All right. Then you take your... Oh, this is me kind of building the design. So like I said, you know, you can choose a monogram. You can choose another design that you like, a licensed design of your favorite team or something like that. But you want to be sure when you are embroidering on faux leather that you don't choose a design that has a heavy amount of stitch fill. That means um, areas where there's a lot of stitches kind of coloring it in. Um, satin stitch outlines are okay. That's what I've used on all these monograms and they all worked beautifully. But a design that has, like, let's say it's a filled in butterfly. What's going to happen with faux leather is it's such a stable fabric and it even has a little bit of stretch to it ever so slightly. But it doesn't have any open areas for all of that thread to fit inside of the structure of the fabric. So what happens is your needle is pushing the leather fibers away to make room for that thread. That's how we get puckering and buckling along the outside of a design on something like leather or faux leather or even cork will do it sometimes. So you want to be sure that you're choosing a design that's either outline only um, with straight stitching or a minimized satin stitch edge, um, something like that. So hopefully that makes sense. All right. So you can build a monogram any number of ways. This monogram I'm showing, I built in software. I used creative drawings and I brought in a font from Designs by Juju, and this monogram is showing the first initial, the middle initial, and the last initial. Or you can do a monogram where the middle initial is a little bit larger, and the first initial is flanked on the left, and the middle initial is on the right. Or in the one I'm going to show you here with my overhead camera, I have just the first initial and the last initial. Some people don't have a middle name or maybe using that middle initial 
pushes your design outside of the boundaries of that stitchable area on the luggage tag. So you can just forget it all together and do the first and last initial. It's totally up to you. So this is what I chose for this purple sample, having the um, last name initial larger and then either initial on either side. So this is just me building that monogram, sizing it for the luggage tag. I had to make it considerably smaller and then exporting it to my machine. Now, depending on uh, the hoop that you're using, you may want to orient your design so that it stitches horizontally or vertically. But just make sure that however you place your luggage tag on the sticky stabilizer, you know which way your design is oriented when you uh, tell your machine to get stitching. All right, so this is me measuring the front of that tag and placing my placement sticker right in the center of that stitchable area. There it is. And now you are going to fold your luggage tag just a little bit so that it's along, here I have my placement sticker attached. You're gonna fold that part widthwise along that um, placement sticker line and place it on the sticky part of your hoop right along that same line and then let the flap go and make sure that your um, opposite cross mark matches the line that you put on your stabilizer. And that's how you will stick your luggage tag to the stabilizer in the hoop. All right, so now you can put it on the machine and double check your placement. So in, you don't wanna do a perimeter-based function at all because your needle's going to perforate the leather and you can't recover from that. So instead, I just move through the design um, as if I'm advancing the stitches and that shows me where my design's going to stitch. You can kind of do a four point um, move without your needle penetrating into the leather and that just kind of double and triple checks your placement. And once you're satisfied with that, you can remove your placement sticker. Again, I forget this so many times, so it's great that it's water soluble. But if you do remove it, you can simply reuse it a couple of times before it loses its stickiness. Um, I'm on number three of this placement sticker and I will probably be able to use it at least three more times. So printing out one of these, you know, just hang it in your sewing room um, on a little, you know, push pin and those will last you a long, long time. All right, so remove your placement sticker and stitch out your design. Ta-da! So for this, I used Sulky Poly Deco, no, excuse me, I used Sulky Rayon in the needle and then I used Sulky Poly Light in the bobbin in the same color. So it was like a teal on the top and a teal on the bottom. Um, and that's because you're going to see the wrong side of your design, right? Now, it's not gonna be a big deal if you use white bobbin thread or black bobbin thread. If um, I was doing the black luggage tag, I would probably use black bobbin thread to kind of more match um, the luggage tag itself and then just use whatever color I want to on the top in the needle. And I used a 7511 embroidery needle, um, not a leather needle. The embroidery needle has a little bit of a ball point to it, which is great for something that has a little bit of stretch to it. And I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but this is a tiny bit stretchy. Um, so that really worked for me. All right, so when your embroidery is complete, you're going to remove your luggage tag from that hooped stabilizer, and then just get in there and get the rest of the bits of stabilizer so that you have a nice, clean backing of your embroidery. And then it's just a matter of putting the little loop 
back on the luggage tag, and there you go. All right, so this is the next method of sticky stabilizer, but before we do that, I am actually going to just demo this in real time for you. I am going to switch my camera here, and here I am set up at the machine. I'm gonna try and move my microphone closer uh, because sometimes it becomes a little bit more difficult to hear me when I move over to this spot. Um, so just if you need to turn up your volume to hear me a little bit better, please feel free. All right, so here I have my stabilizer in the hoop. I have the sticky plus facing up. I'm going to take my slitting pen and I'm actually going to do the second method that I was going to show you in photos, but that is what's really great about the slitting pen is you can go along these guidelines on the sticky plus and only remove a small amount of paper, which allows you to make a little patch and get another stitch out out of the same hooping. So I hope that makes sense, but here we go. Let's see the best vantage point to do this. I'm just eyeballing this, but you could also just measure your luggage tag to make sure you're giving yourself enough room. And you can see how I even have my hand under this and my machine as well and I'm not slicing through any of it. It's just that simple to use this slitting pen. And then you get a little bit of the corner up and you can tear it away inside of your scored edge. And if I was at a different vantage point, I could probably tear this away much cleaner. It's a little awkward having it right on my machine. But now you can see I have just this center area ready to place my luggage tag. Okay, so now I'm going to mark my placement line. Now, the thing about this, since I have used the grid, I can actually use these lines as my center cross marks. However, sometimes you don't get your sticky plus in the hoop perfectly symmetrical, which I actually did not. So I'm going to mark it anyway to make sure that everything turns out the way I want it to. See how this one is a little bit off? I'm just gonna mark that and then I'm gonna use these hoop markings See how I didn't have a line on my template that was perfectly matched up with those horizontal marks? So now I do. I'm gonna take my luggage tag and my design, let's see where I have to remember how I oriented it. It's going to go this way. So, I have my placement sticker on my luggage tag. I'm going to fold it along one of those lines and try to match it up pretty good. Might need to do a little bit of finessing on this part just to be sure. That's the great thing about using Sticky Plus also is that you can pick it up and replace it and all of those things. Now, in hindsight, I probably wanted the bulk of my luggage tag facing that way. So I would have rotated my design upside down just so that this isn't hitting the machine arm but I'm gonna stick with it during embroidery, so I think it's going to be fine. So at this point, 
I am going to put my hoop on the machine. I may have to hold this down during the first part of my stitching process so that you see how this wants to kind of bump up close to my presser foot. I'm just gonna kind of hold it down out of the way while it stitches the very first uh, line of the design. So before I get going, I'm going to remove my placement sticker, like I said, and stick it back on my paper so I can reuse it. All right, I have a pretty light green that I'm using on the dark green. And this is a 40 weight rayon from the Radiant Rayons assortment. And then I have Poly Light in the bobbin. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the embroidery and I won't embroider it for too long. And then I'll take you through this process that I did with Poly Sparkle Thread in just a moment. I'm just stopping the stitch out because I have, whoops, a thread tail that is a little too long for my liking. I don't want it to get caught in the rest of the stitching. So I'm just gonna pull that around and trim it off and then keep going. Okay, so does everyone notice how I skipped a step and it's kind of not very cool? I was supposed to triple check my design placement, uh, advancing my needle across the design, and I didn't do that. I got a little too confident, and you could see how the D is a little bit too close to the edge along that upper edge. So what I'm going to do before moving forward is I'm actually going to adjust the second half of my design so that the next initial goes a little bit too close to the lower edge and that way it will kind of balance itself out, I think. That's my hope. That's gonna be my strategy. So the D is a little bit high, the M will be a little bit low, and then hopefully it ends up actually looking centered along my luggage tag. So I'll be working on that um, after I take you through the Poly Sparkle uh, demo there. But um, that's kind of how you can recover uh, from mistakes that you might make too, is if you notice that that's happening, don't panic. Don't stop the machine and rip out all those stitches because all of those needle penetrations are going to be permanent. So you just have to go with it. But you can always stop the design before it gets to another part or gets to another letter and then adjust that next letter so that it looks like you did it on purpose. That's going to be um, our little secret. <laughs> okay. So here's what I did in picture form if it was a little bit harder to see. So I used the slitting pen to um, expose only the amount I needed for that luggage tag to stick to the sticky plus. 
okay? Then when we go to tear it away, when embroidery is complete, we can make a little patch and use it one more time. I don't like to go any farther than two times if I'm patching in stabilizer to use for a hoopless embroidery because it really just does not end well. Um, but you can get about two uses out of it. So if you buy a bunch of these, let's say you're taking all the grandkids on a road trip and you want them all to have something that commemorates their travels, but it's personalized and you're doing six of these all at once, you can get about two hoopings out of the Sticky Plus if you patch it in doing it this way. All right. And then here I oriented, so here you could see my horizontal monogram. And then on this one, I have the monogram going vertically and the letters are kind of intersecting. Again, it's hard to see with the lights, but um, it's a little bit sparkly um, and it's actually really easy to see, <laughs> but it's a, just a little bit difficult here with the lights today. But you can see how the letters kind of intersect and they're going um, a little bit diagonally. So I thought that was a cute take uh, to fit a monogram going vertically on the luggage tag because, you know, when it hangs off of your suitcase or bag, it's hanging this way. So that's just another kind of take on it. So now I have my placement sticker going up and down vertically, and then I've hooped my luggage tag on that sticky stabilizer so that the bulk of the luggage tag that's not being embroidered is closest to me. So just another way of hooping it. And then design placement. So making sure that your needle, when it's in the center position, is hitting the center of your placement sticker and the center of the markings on your stabilizer. And then you also want to advance through the design without stitching anything, without your needle hitting anything, just to make sure that it all fits where you want it. Once you've done that, you can begin the stitch out. Now, like I said, I used Sulky Poly Sparkle for my top thread, and then I used Poly Light in a color that matched the luggage tag on the inside, in my bobbin. Now, the Poly Sparkle, sews out just like a polyester thread, but it's 30 weight instead of 40 weight. So I did use a little bit bigger needle. I used a 9014 embroidery needle for this. So I went from a 7511 with the regular poly deco to a 9014 to accommodate the thickness of the thread. I also slowed my machine down at least by half when stitching the poly sparkle just to be on the safe side. You know, it does have these metallic flex in it and we don't want excess friction happening with our needle and, and leather combination. So just keep that in mind. But monograms are a great way to sub poly sparkle into the mix of our typical rayon or poly deco machine embroidery. Um, you don't want to sub poly sparkle for something that has a lot of stitch fill um, unless that design was digitized for a thicker 30 weight thread. But with monograms, especially these sort of more open monograms that have a thin satin stitch, it really works out quite well. So love it. And there it is a little bit up close. I was trying to get the sparkle in there so you could see it. Now you can see, even though it's a tone on tone, um, the pink thread is a little bit lighter color than the pink of the luggage tag. All right, and then there it is hanging on the suitcase. Um, that's a little bit more representative of the pink color. It's not a hot pink, it's more like a, a baby pink. Um, or magenta-ish, uh, so really, really cute. And there's that purple one, ready to go on the suitcase. So, all right, and you can tell, you know, well, 
You can make these for any gender, any person, any age. These would be great for kids' gifts, grandkids' gifts, graduation especially. Um, and again, just unifying your own luggage. When you have a lot of pieces and parts and a zipper tote here and a Casey duffel here and a suitcase here, you know, it's like pink, 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 and here's all my sayings. You can even, instead of your monogram, you can personalize it with what's inside. You know, maybe this is your sewing tote and it says sew to go. And then maybe this is your weekender bag and you spell weekender like W-K-N-D-R, you know, again, kind of like you would do on your license plate so that it fits on there. You can get really cute and creative with your sayings on those luggage tags. So I'm going to go through the comments here and make sure that there are no pending questions. Uh, make sure to head on over to the Sulky blog and you'll get the full tutorial for the luggage tags as well as our smart packing post where I link to all of the um, So Can She Organizer, the Posh Trapper Tote, the Casey Duffel. Everything I showed you today is linked in today's post as well as all the great products that I demoed, including this slitting pen. If you don't have one of these, it will change your life. <laughs> it changed mine. I was really sick of using those pins to uh, slice through my stabilizer backing and just having it accidentally go through because I don't know, I guess I'm just, I'm really fast. And so sometimes I get careless. So that's really helpful. Okay. Yes. The slitting pen is genius. <laughs> Okay. Linda, great idea. I always check my center placement before I start so that I don't get my design lopsided or running outside the design area. I know I really, when, when that D started approaching the edge of the luggage tag, I thought, man, I measured this so many times. I just got too confident and I skipped that step. And, you know, now I've got to make some adjustments. All right. Turned out great. Thank you so much. Good tips for sewing with the sparkle. If you haven't tried Poly Sparkle yet, we have some in some thread assortments. Um, some of them are grouped together by season too. So we have a winter Poly Sparkle assortment. Um, there's an ultimate Valentine Poly Sparkle assortment. So if you are making Valentine's cards, um, little pouches, little gifties, that type of thing. That's a great assortment um, to grab up. All right, the sparkle thread looks nice. Thank you. And yes, if you are uh, making these great projects, again, we love to see what you are creating. So please join us at our Sulky Stitch and Post Facebook group. Uh, we will be... Um, you know, interacting with you there on a daily basis. And you might just get some fun free things out of it too. We're going to do some special promotions for people who are part of that group. So please get on over there and see what people are posting and start a conversation of your own. And I think you will really enjoy it. Diane says, is the stabilizer strong enough to do two tags at the same time? Just rotate the tags opposite each other. Um, absolutely. You could do two in one hooping if you have a larger hoop and it would be strong enough to withstand that for sure. So that's a great solution to doing multiples. Um, and Linda says, can you use smaller hoops so you don't use as much stabilizer? Yes. So the 12120, that's what I used uh, for this because it's the smallest hoop that I have. But you always want to use the smallest hoop available for the design that you've chosen. Um, just make sure that your luggage tag or your stitchable um, area fits on that stabilizer and you're good to go. So absolutely, if you have a smaller hoop than that, by all means, use it. Um, it'll be much easier to um, uh, secure your stabilizer and the item on top of it as well. Oh, the dog is whining to get back in. <laughs> All right. I think I have caught up on the questions. Uh, so thank you all for joining me today. Be sure 
to join me next week. We'll be going live at 2 p.m. Eastern time at sewingonline.sulky.com with the Casey Duffel video cast. This is a Sally Tomato bag pattern with lots of great finishes. Great for your smart packing and traveling. It's a great weekender bag or project tote. Holds so many things. So please join me next Tuesday for this live video cast. I will be having multiple cameras where you can see the sewing up close and in real time. It's not a traditional sew along, but you will get lots of tips and real time techniques for making your bag. And be sure to grab up your kit before that burgundy one sells out. If you want that burgundy one, I suggest getting it today before it's gone. And that gray one is also a beautiful, beautiful colorway. I really can't decide which one I like better. So join me next week for another So What, followed by the Casey Duffel over at sewingonline.sulky.com. And it'll be a great time and a great Tuesday and a great way to uh, dive in to National Embroidery Month on this February 22. So thank you again, and I will see you all next week for another So What.